Hey guys, we are looking at two sequences and we're being asked to find the explicit formula for each, okay? As you're working on these, you are going to hear different terms, arithmetic recursive formula, arithmetic explicit, geometric recursive, and geometric explicit. So in this video, I am talking about arithmetic explicit formulas. If you need any of these other ones, I'm gonna link a playlist in the corner for you to check those out, okay? So these are sequences, meaning these numbers are related to each other in some way. They're not just a random list of numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the pattern here. So when I look at this for a minute, I realize that we are adding nine each time. To get the next number, you add nine. Now, the purpose of an explicit formula is to find more numbers in this sequence. This dot, dot, dot is telling me that this keeps going. It doesn't end there, okay? So the explicit formula that I make, I want a formula that someone can plug in. I want to know the hundredth term in this sequence. They can plug it in and get it by using the formula, okay? Now, before we do that, there's a little bit of terminology we need to go over, and then it falls into place pretty quickly. So when you're working with these, you're going to see a lot of A's and a lot of N's. The N refers to the place it is in line, basically, the place in the sequence. So N equals 1 is the first number in the sequence. N equals 3 is the third number in the sequence, and on it goes, right? When you see A with a little number like this, a little subscript, A sub 1, that's talking about the value of that number, okay? So... A sub 1 in this case is negative 4. You're also going to see A sub n quite frequently. What that is saying is plug in whatever number you want for n to find that in the sequence. So if I had A sub 100, I'm looking for the 100th term. Okay. As we write our formulas, we're going to leave a lot of things as A sub n so people can plug in what they want. So now that we know all of that terminology, we can go ahead and start here. I want to pretend for a second that we are looking for the fifth term here, a sub 5. Okay, now all I would do is add 9 again, right, which would give me 43. But how do I make this explicit formula we're talking about that will let me find any number in this sequence? Well, guess what? I'm going to show you the formula, but listen, I don't want you just to simply memorize it, okay? <laughs> I mean, I can't control what you do, but I'm going to explain it in a way that I hope will help you remember and you won't have to just memorize it, okay? You'll understand why you're using it, okay? So here we go. So we're going to fill this in and I'll kind of explain it as we go. So remember this A sub N means whatever number you're looking for, right? If you're looking for the hundredth number in the sequence, plug in 100 for N or whatever you're looking for. So whatever number you want to find, that is equal to the first term in my sequence, A sub 1, which in this case is 7. And then this D is the common difference, meaning what are we doing each time? And we already figured that out, right? We are adding 9 to get the next term. So plus 9. But if I just do that once, that gives me the second number, right? But what about all of the rest? Well, when we found this fifth term, you'll notice how many times did we add 9? We added 9, 1, 2, 3, 4 times to get that fifth term, right? We added it one less time than the number we needed. So that is where this n minus 1 comes into place. Okay, so we have n minus 1 one. Okay. One less than however, whatever place you want to find, right? So this is my formula. And some teachers might want you just to leave it like this, but some teachers probably want you to clean it up, get rid of the parentheses. Okay. So that's what we're going to do real fast. We're going to distribute the nine in, and then we're going to check our answer and make sure we're feeling good about it. Okay. So I'm going to have 7 plus 9n minus 9. And then I'm going to combine like terms. And I end up with 9n minus 2. Okay. That is my formula. 
So you should be able to use this and go, okay, I want to know the hundredth term, plug in a hundred. Okay. I want to know the 500th term, plug in 500. Isn't that cool? You guys, you can find any number in the sequence, but I told you we we're going to check it. So let's go ahead and check. Now we know what the fifth term is, but let's go ahead and use our equation, our formula and make sure that we get it right. So we're just going to check right here. So I am looking for the number in the fifth spot, n equals five, right? So let's plug that in. A sub five is going to be equal to nine times n, which we're plugging in five minus two, okay? So I have a sub five equals 45 minus two. Oh, I'm feeling real good about this, equals 43. Look at that. We did it. So I'm feeling confident that we could plug in whatever place we wanted to, and we could find that number in this sequence. Cool, right? Okay. All right, next one. Let's go ahead and look over here. Look at it for a second and decide what are we doing each time. We are, did you figure it out? We are subtracting six each time. You always want to make sure that the pattern continues. And I should also point out, this told us just straight up that these were arithmetic sequences. But if we weren't told that, I could figure that out because we were adding and subtracting. That makes it arithmetic. If you're multiplying or dividing, that's what makes it geometric. Okay, I have a whole video on that if you need a refresher. Okay, all right. So we have our formula. But remember, we aren't just memorizing this because... We know why it works, right? Okay, so for whatever number we want to find, right, we take the first number in our sequence, a sub 1, and we add our common difference, or in this case, we're subtracting, minus 6. But how many times do you subtract 6? Well, it depends on which place you want, right? Whatever place you want, you subtract six one less time, right? For the fourth term, I subtracted six three times. Uh, isn't that cool? Okay, again, some teachers might want you to leave your answer just like that. Beautiful. Some want you to simplify it down further, okay? So let's go ahead and distribute that negative six in. So we are going to have a sub n equals 45 minus six n plus six, okay? And continuing on, we are going to have negative six n plus 51. Look at that, guys. Okay, I know you wanna check it. I could just feel those vibes coming. So let's see if we figure out the next term this way, it would be 21, right? Let's make sure that our equation gets us 21, and then I'm feeling confident that we can plug in whatever number we want, okay? So we're going to check. So we wanna know the fifth spot, n equals five. So I'm gonna say a sub n equals negative six times five plus 51. Okay, a sub five equals negative six times five is going to give me negative 30 plus 51. And guess what that is equal to guys? 21. Yes. Okay. Now we like to check ourselves because say I got something different than 21. I can go back and check my work and see where I may have gotten something wrong. Okay. All right. Hopefully this helps. I will have that playlist linked with lots of other videos for you. Thanks.